Hi everyone! Thank you for joining us again for today's devotional. Let's just start off this day by worshiping God together through this song. See what love the Father has for us That He breathed life in what once was dust And no oh, one love lavished on us That His Son would give His life to us We receive Jesus died for us Put our guilt and shame upon the cross The greater love that God has shown to us Still in our sin He made a way for us We receive your love for us we believe it it's power for us we receive your love for us we believe it it's power for us our sin has been defeated Oh, death, where is your sting? The love of our Messiah has won our victory. The power of your love, we sing, Lord, we receive. The love that bought our freedom, the love of Christ our King. Our sin has been defeated. Oh, death, where is your sting? The love of our Messiah has won our victory. The power of your love, we sing, Lord, we receive. The love that bought our freedom, the love of Christ our King. Our sin has been defeated. Oh, death, where is your sin? The love of our Messiah has won our victory. The power of your love, we sing, Lord, we receive. The love that bought our freedom, the love of Christ our King. We receive it, we receive it. We believe in 
its power for us. Lord, thank you for this day. God, allow us to receive from you as we look into your word. Open our hearts to just really receive the word that you're planting deep into our soul, into our spirit, and help us respond in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, good morning, everyone. And this week, we've been looking into what is known as Paul's apostolic prayer for the church in Ephesus, which is found in chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. But I'll read up to verse 19 only today. It says here, Verse 15, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you, what are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His great might. Paul's prayer is that God would open the eyes of the believers to see the truth about God so that they would know three things. In the verses that we read, it says there are three things. The first one is that the hope to which they are called. The second one is the riches of God's glorious inheritance in the saints. And the third is the immeasurable power of God at work in the believer's life. So yesterday, we talked about the first one. Tomorrow, you'll learn about the third one. But today, we're going to look into the second thing that Paul mentioned, and it is found in verse 18. So it says there, um, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Now, this verse talks about inheritance. What comes to your mind when you say the word inheritance? You know, usually when inheritance is mentioned, it is something that is received in the future, something that is definitely valuable, and something that stirs up excitement, especially when you're the one receiving it. But I want us to understand that the inheritance that Paul was referring to here is not us receiving the inheritance, although Paul talks about this aspect in other parts of this letter. Not even us giving the inheritance, but us being the inheritance. And if you look at the verse that we read closely, it speaks of us being God's inheritance. Now, what does this mean? Again, when you look at the concept of an inheritance, there are a few elements surrounding it. First and foremost, it has a recognized value. You know, the value may be monetary, taas ng market value, may resale value, or may profit involved. But other inheritances may be for the sake of memory. Kaya nga, di ba yung mga heirloom, which is, might not, might not be valuable for you, but it's valuable to a certain group of people because of the memory that it holds. The point here is this. An inheritance has its value because its value is being recognized by the one giving it and the one receiving it. Second, it has to be owned by someone so that it can be received by someone else. And this speaks of ownership. Dahil pag hindi, hindi mo siya mapapamana exclusively to someone. It is considered as a public property. Anyone can claim it. Anyone can use it. Now, if you put these two elements together, in a nutshell, an inheritance can be described as a treasured possession. Treasure because it has a value and possession because somebody owns it. And that is what Paul is saying here to the believers then. And I believe this is also for us now. That our eyes might be open to who we are in God. That we are God's treasured possession. Now, what does that mean? You know, two simple yet powerful truths that we can learn from this is, is this. First, we are owned by God. Remember, an inheritance have it has to have a defined owner and us being God's inheritance means God owns us. Our identity is that we are His. You know, in a world that is crazy about personal branding, may we be reminded that we belong to God first and foremost. We are not owned by pop culture, trends, traditions, or even expectations. We are owned by God. We are His. Now, when you look at the way you live your life, that is, that, does it show who you belong to? Second is that we are valued by God. Our value is not dependent on what the world says we are, but on who God says we are. 
you know, in a world where society tends to equate our value depending on our performance, what we can do, what we can deliver, what we can contribute, or depending on the affirmation from other people, number of likes, subs, comments, birthday greetings, you know, this is very assuring. God values us just because we are His. Some of you know na I have two children, and for others, they are just another student in the class, another contact in their social media, another teenager, another statistic in the youth population, but not for me. Just because they are my children, the way I see them and value them is very different from the world. The way I value their opinions, their likes, what they, what they care about, it, it's so different from how the world would value those things. Now, if I ask you this question, where do you tend to anchor your value on? If you took an honest assessment in your life, where do you tend to anchor your value on? You know, when the world tends to lower down your value, be reminded that you are valuable simply because you are God's treasured possession. Maybe you're participating right now and you feel like you have lost your value. It may be because of the things that you've done in the past or maybe because other people said otherwise. You know, go back to these powerful truths. God owns you and God values you. Now, I only mentioned two elements a while ago about an inheritance, but there is a third and I think very crucial element to it. Somebody has to pay the price. The person who pays the price for it sets the value and also determines ownership. See, bago pa yan maging inheritance, somebody has to determine its value, pay the price for it, and own it first and foremost. And for us to be God's inheritance, somebody paid the price so that our value can be set and the ownership defined. And that person is no other than Jesus Christ. Remember that the value is determined by the price someone is willing to pay. Jesus paid for us with His own life, with His blood. And that is how valuable you and I are to God. As we end, remember this. We are God's riches. We are God's reward. We are God's treasured possession that Christ purchased for God. Do not let the world or yourself tell you otherwise. Let's just take this time to pray. God, I pray that you'd open our eyes to see how you see us, God, that we are your treasured possession. I pray that you'd allow us to see the value that you've placed in us. You valued us so much that you gave your son to redeem us and restore us, God. And Lord, for those who are participating in this devotional right now, if they feel like they have somewhat, somehow lost the value, their value along the way, I pray that you'd bring them back to this powerful truth that because of what Jesus did for them on the cross, because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we are again brought back into your family. And Lord, I ask that from this day forward, God, you'd allow us to have the grace to live as your treasured possession. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't we worship God once again with this song? Our sin has been defeated Oh death, where is your sting? The love of far Messiah Has won our victory The power of your love We sing, Lord, we receive the love that bought our freedom, the love of Christ our King. We receive it, we receive it, we receive it, your love for us. We believe in it, we believe. We believe in its power for us. We receive it. We receive it. Yes, Lord. We receive it. Your love for us. We believe it. We believe. Believe it, it's for us. 
As we end, I just want to speak this word of blessing for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. God bless everyone and always remember that you are God's treasured possession.